warm welcome to Disky Talk with Viola. If you're tuning in for the very first time, I ask that you please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you've been a part of this journey, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this episode. So, on today's episode, we discuss all things Kaiser Chiefs. I'm a cause. Let's get right into it. So we will then start with um, the players who have been called up to the national team. So five players have been called up to the national team from Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, firstly being Bruce. Bruce uh, Mabiliso. You've got uh, Jabulo Blom. You've got uh, Tavani Dube and Jabulo Ngobo. So very excited that um, our potential back five have been called up to the national team you know it just shows how how well they've been playing in the past couple of months so with bruce um like i always mention that i just think that he would be uh, a candidate for that um bafana bafana number one jersey and for kaiser chiefs as well you know and um, the difficult thing then with him when he goes to the national team is that he can't really pin down a starting berth because he doesn't play regularly for Kaiser Chiefs, you know. And then when you look at uh, Njabulo Blom, this is a player who is very versatile, you know. He can play in the heart of midfield and can play as a fullback. And then when you have a look at um, the centre-back pairing of Tavani Dube and uh, Njabulo Ngobo, these are two very good players who have done really well in the past couple of months, uh, especially at the Kosafa Cup where they led... Um, they led uh, Bafana Bafana to the win at the Kosafa Cup. And then Mabili saw a young uh, left back who is um, rising and growing in stature. You know, I think this will bode really well for his confidence. However, the reason why I have started with this segment is because I want us then to have a look at uh, as to why don't these why aren't these players playing? You know, if they can get called up for the national team, it means that Hugo Bruce has seen something. So the question that begs then is, should these four players form part and parcel of our back four and then Bruce in goals? And uh, when you look at what they bring and um, how they would actually stabilize um, that case achieves team, I think um, there's a very good chance that in the near future that they could become the back four. However, it's going to take a while until, uh, in my own opinion, Stuart Baxter sort of realizes that this could actually be our back four, well, our back five. Because when you look at those four players, there is great balance. So Chiefs do normally line up in a 4-2-3-1. So just um, ignore the red. Let's look at the blue. That would be Kaiser Chiefs. So Kaiser Chiefs would normally line up in a 4-2-3-1. So with Mabili, so you've got... Um, what I like about him is that he reads the game very well. A, B, he's also defensively sound. So he's not a fullback that always gets get gets caught out of possession, and uh, he's not a fullback that you will see him just bombing up, you know, without having read the game and read the situation. When the play progresses and the space and his channel on his side opens up, that's when he's able to progress into that channel and deliver those crosses. He's also got um, very good crosses on him, you know, and uh, like I said, you know, he's still a young player, so there's still so much that can happen with him. You can develop into a really quality left back. And then when we then look at the two center halves in Njabulo Ngobo and Tavani Dube, they could form this perfect center back partnership from a tactical perspective, a build-up perspective, and an offensive perspective. Why do I say that? So from a build-up perspective, Tavani Dube would open, Ngobo would open. Tavani Dube would then progress play on his strong foot, which is the, on the left-hand side of uh, the defense of Kaiser Chiefs. And we do know that uh, we don't have another left-footed center half who can play and um, be able then to read the game as well as a Tavani Dube reads the game. So I think the time has come for Stuart Baxter to go with this back, to go with this... Um, center-back partnership at the back. Yes, we do know that they don't have um, uh, a great deal of experience, but 
there's, you know, it's now or never, you know, they're not getting any younger, you know, with both of them uh, heading to um, their late 20s. So with Ngobo being 26, and then you've got Talani Dube who's 27, they're not getting any younger. I think you throw them into the deep end and they form a partnership. The advantage of that is that they've already won the Kosafa Cup together. So they do understand one another. So I think that from a build-up perspective, I think that would be very good with regards to developing the game and progressing the game as well. And why I think it would complement the midfield is because You've got Nange, you've got Cole Alexander. These are players who are always looking to get onto the ball and start play for Kaiser Chiefs from deep areas. That is more so a Cole Alexander. He always wants to collect the ball from deep. So when you have two comfortable centre-halves who are able then to play that ball into midfield, then that would bode well for them because then we'd start to see the best of them and operating at um, maximum capacity with regards to A, their comfort, B, their technical skill set. So those are the guys that I think would be perfect as a centre-back partnership. Yes, at first they will struggle, at times they will concede goals, but they'll grow you know, and if you never play them, you'll never know. And then when we look at the right back position, uh, we look at Blom. I think Blom can make this his own position because when you look at Kaiser Chiefs, Frostler has played there, but Frostler struggles defensively, more so than Njabulo Blom. And um, this is where Njabulo Blom rose to prominence when he broke through into this Kaiser Chiefs side. And I think he can really make this position his own, you know, and then there's Bruce and Gore. So these five, which have been called up to the national team by uh, Hugo Bruce, I think going forward that we should be looking at these five being our defense, you know, and I think that um, from a defensive perspective and an offensive perspective, it would be very balanced because these aren't two fullbacks who will just bomb forward without reading the game and um, without understanding what's happening on the field of play. And what I like is that um, with Blom, because he has played in the heart of midfield. He's very comfortable on the ball. So he's another that can progress the ball. And whenever he does go forward, we do know that he's got a quality final ball on him and a pinpoint cross. We have seen that um, he is able to get that assist. So I think that would be a very, very, very strong back four for Kaiser Chiefs. And uh, I just would like to see Stuart Baxter instituting that back four going forward, you know. However... That we will leave to the man and we'll leave to the tactician. But I just hope that he does institute that back four because I think that would bode really well for this case of Chiefs side and for Bafana Bafana going forward. So before I move on to the next segment, then do let me know at home, what do you make of um, these five players getting that Bafana Bafana call up? And how do you think that they can grow? And what... What confidence does it give them to get that cap when going back to Kaiser Chiefs? Can they then um, get back to Kaiser Chiefs and fight for a regular berth? Or do you think that Stuart Baxter will just persist with Matoho and Cardoso? He mustn't. He must change. We want change. <laughs> but anyway, moving on then right along to um, the next segment where we have a tactical preview of the game that Kaiser Chiefs will play against Barroca. So it is Kaiser Chiefs versus Barroca. So Barroca will be represented by the red team. The blue team will represent Kaiser Chiefs. So then according to how Stuart Baxter has been lining up, do you know that it's a 4-2-3-1? And um, Blom at right back, uh, We've got uh, Mato as the right-sided centre-half, Cardoso left-sided centre-half. Then we've got Santi as the left-back. And then we've got uh, Kune in goals. But like I did mention in the previous segment that I would like to see a change, you know, from Stuart Baxter. I really would love to see a change because I think that we've got young energetic and fresh players who could really contribute to this Kaiser Chiefs side and make a huge difference. And then in the heart of midfield, you've got Nange, you've got uh, Cole Alexander, who um, I'm, I'm really impressed by them. I think they're growing and each game they're showing um, 
positive signs and uh, they're showing us what they can do. And uh, Nange is also giving a very different dimension with regards to how he's able to switch play and how he's also able to read game and uh, link play from deep from Kaiser Chiefs. And uh, he's also shown his ability and capability to go box to box. So I've thoroughly enjoyed watching Nange play. It is a, a breath of fresh air, you know, from what we're used to when it comes to Kaiser Chiefs. So very positive signs from this double pivot. And then, you know, Piliat starting off the left, Sikhota starting off the right. And then you've got Bernard Parker, you've got Nukovic. However, when it comes then to the forward line, I would also like to see a couple of changes being made. You know, maybe seeing Ngobo come starting from the beginning. And then when Keegan Dolly does get into full fitness, seeing him start as well, you know. And um, let's, let's look at it from a different perspective, right? Maybe let's say a false nine. Let's say uh, maybe then you've got Piliat as your false nine. You've got um, Keegan Dolly starting on the right-hand side. You've got Sukhota starting on the left-hand side. And then you've got Novo in there. What would that do for Kaiser Chiefs? Well, firstly, it would offer so much fluidity and uh, positional play by virtue of the fact that these three would always be rotating. However, we do know that Novo would most likely prefer to stick in the half spaces. Yes, he can rotate when needs be because he's such an intelligent footballer. But he would then occupy... Uh, the half spaces and the central zones but you could have billiard coming to the left you could have dolly occupying there so in the opposition half what it could look like it could look a bit like this where you have sikhota uh on the right hand side you've got novo uh in that central zone you've got billiard as a false nine in zone 14 you got dolly there so they could interchange you know you could see Dolly coming in whenever Mabili so goes, you know, and um, you could see uh, an overload in the half space if Novo comes out and uh, they could look to penetrate this half space and uh, Biliat joining as well, Sikhota tucking in. So I just think that when you go with the false nine with Biliat up front, Sikhota coming off the one side, Dolly off the other side, when he is fully fit and ready to play and Novo coming from behind, I think it gives Chiefs so much uh, fluidity and um, versatility as well. And uh, what I also like is that if Kaiser Chiefs are penned in, it's great because it offers, um, it's a double-edged sword by virtue of the fact that Yes, they're so good in possession. They can keep hold of the ball. They can play in the half spaces. They can play in the central zone. And they can play through the channels. But they can also hit you on the counter. Because all four of these players are very good on the transition. And especially these three players. Being Sikhota, Biliat and Keegan Dolly. They've got so much speed. And then the balance with a Ngobo who can pinpoint an accurate pass. Which could split the defense. But that is what I view and that is what I would do if I had the chance then to institute my own philosophy with this case, the chief side. But most likely with Stuart Baxter, you're going to have Parker, you're going to have Nukovic, you have Sikhota, then you'll have um, Biliat. And then coming off the bench, second half, you're looking at Nobo, you're looking at Keegan Dolly, you're looking at uh, Sabelo Khadebe to influence play. However, like I always mentioned, that it is subject to change. So certain things do change. And um, yeah, we want that change. We want to see those players coming into the lineup. We want to see more dynamic and more exciting players coming into the lineup. And a special mention as well to Dumisani Zuma, who is um, recovering from his injury, you know, that is a player who, when fully fit, can also contribute so much to this Kaiser Chiefs side. However, then, when we move along then to Barocca and uh, how they line up, so with Barocca, you're looking at a 4 4 1 1 or a 4 4. A 4-4-2, your traditional 4-4-2. So in goals, you'd have uh, Oscar Rin. At uh, right back, you'd have Mpatele. Uh, your two center halves, you'd have Shozi and you'd have Smia. And then um, at left back, you'd have Gebart. Uh, I struggle to pronounce the name, but it's along those lines. And then in midfield, you're looking at uh, Atinko Sidala 
who is a very, very good ball player. Very disappointed that one of the bigger teams didn't pick him up. You know, he did start at Supersport, was at University of Pretoria, but he now finds himself within this Barocca side. Very key player when it comes to building up play and uh, collecting the ball from deep and progressing play for this Barocca side. And then you've got Kambala, you've got Chauke, and then you've got Mukab Mukabi, and then you've got Mahopa and uh, Mbulu up front. Um, yeah, so with Mahopa, you know, is a player who got his goal. He opened up his account in the previous encounter. So we do know that he's a very dangerous uh, striker. And um, look, what I like about him is that he's got a very complete skill set. And uh, he will keep uh, these two center halves very occupied. But uh, another player who can also come into this Barocca side uh, is Piri, you know, left footed, very good from set pieces, always looking for that first time delivery and um, a threat from free kicks, you know. So that is a player that could also come into this Barocca side and look to influence um, this game as well. So when we then have a look at how this game will play out as I move on to the extra time segment and give you my prediction with regards to this game. So I think Kaiser Chiefs will win this game 2-1. And uh, look, I think Kaiser Chiefs at times they'll struggle with the threat of Mahopa and Bulu with regards to their hold up play and how they occupy these two center these two center halves. But Mahopa will be very very instrumental in this game as I will highlight him as the key player for uh, this Baraka side. And then when we look at um, Kaiser Chiefs, I think Sukhota is will be the key player coming into this game, how he looks to manipulate the ball out wide, how he looks to beat his man and deliver those uh, balls into the box. As we do know that um, he's got a very good delivery on him and he's also got an eye for goal. I think this is a player who can really grow in stature and really stamp his authority within this case achieved side. However, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Luyolo. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one too. Please do interact. Feel free as uh, you guys are part of the Disky Talk with Luyolo family. Tell me, what do you guys make of um, uh, Stuart Baxter with regards to his approach to games? Do you think it should change? Or do you think that we're uh, we on the right path? There is growth? Or... Do you guys feel like no man, but there's players on the bench who can come in and make an impact? And with Barocca, do you guys see them having a great season or do you think they will struggle? And um, how many goals do you see Mahopa ending up with? Do you think that he can challenge for the golden boot this season? And who walks away as victors in this game? I think it will be Kaiser Chiefs 2-1. Thank you very much for tuning in to yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Luyolo signing out.